So this is introducing Flowline. Some of you on, on the line hopefully will have seen this before. Uh, this is essentially how we represent on the left-hand side in hierarchies the structure of those locations. So we have buildings as building A and building B as the two locations. And in the floors hierarchy, we have three floors for each of those buildings. We're able then to get away from combining the work breakdown structure and the location breakdown structure. So these are physical locations, and we can keep the location breakdown structure on that left-hand hierarchy, and then we can still use a work breakdown structure within the task hierarchy. As we used to, we have the calendar along the top. And instead of representing the Gantt chart bars as a list of activities, we're now showing the flow of work as these guys, the crews, move from one location to the next. So this is the way that we add a location breakdown structure to a schedule, and this is how we see the flow of work through those locations over time. The addition of location allows us to see certainly where certain trades are working at certain points in time. So uh, that's one huge benefit is seeing where people should be working. So if we see at this week, we should have the framing guys in the first floor of building B and the drywalling guys should be in this week just starting in the first floor of building A. We also see instantly the discontinuity, discontinuity. so the starts and stops that plague us in the industry. What we're trying to do is get away from that and away from this wasted area. So we force the continuous work of trades to start when they can start and complete their work without any breaks. The reason why we can do that is because of this extra dimension of location and the added algorithms within the software um, that allow us to do uh, a second critical path uh, analysis. So the forward pass and the backward pass happen twice in order for us to understand when to force this task to start and to start working and we know that they can work continuously through the, all of their locations. We identify then areas of poorly utilized location. So as I mentioned, these added, this added dimension of location, the location breakdown structure means that we can see where people are working, where they should be working, and we can see where they're not working and where they should be working again. So if we can do something about that early on, and that's what this structure allows us to do, we can have a more harmonious plan in the first instance. So we can balance resources, and because there's a resource equation driving the duration based on the amount of work in each location, it means that very simply we can have a more accurate and harmonious schedule at the same time. Rather than just making changes arbitrarily, it's actually changing something and asking us what we want to change when we change something. So what you'll see in the software demonstration when we've got quantities loaded in, we've got resources loaded onto the tasks, we actually have to tell the system how many resources we're going to apply in order to achieve the duration that we're trying to optimize for. So this is how location gets added to the schedule from a planning sense. Location is also extremely important when we're using the, the schedule in controlling sense. So in our controlling phase, we can see the tasks and their locations in this matrix. And we can also identify very quickly which ones are critical and at risk. So we can see that we need to focus time. The drywalling guys are behind in the second floor of building A. And I think that as a consequence, the tiling guys are going to be late starting. And these really do flag up because of the location breakdown structure where we should concentrate our effort in the following week. So this data record of start and finish dates then gets plotted into the flow line view, into this location-based schedule view of the, of the trades. And we can see how the solid line was our original plan. The dotted line is our progress to date. This is our report date today. 
And then we can see that the framing guy wasn't too bad. He started slightly late, but he kept on progress or on production. And he's going to finish just slightly late, but it's not going to affect anybody else. However, the drywalling guy, he actually isn't achieving the production. And this deviation, if we don't do something about it, is going to cause some problems to the tiling guy and make him discontinuous. And then this is going to cause some problems to the priming and sealing guy, and he's going to be discontinuous. And overall, we're going to have a forecast delay, which is this dashed set of lines showing our forecast of a couple of weeks, potentially at the end of the contract, if we don't do something about it. So the other opportunity that a location breakdown structure provides us and understanding the crews, it's going to be the same crew working from one location to the next, is using that to um, forecast production in the, the future locations that they're going to work in. So having these connected is also a huge benefit in forecasting production problems in, in the future. So what do we do about these problems? One of the things that we could do is uh, look at the drywalling task and change his crew. And hopefully that will bring things back on track and that will mitigate the clashes and cascading delays that we would be experiencing in the field. 